behemoth of the Harry Potter fandom will never have the grace to die peacefully. Like a bad rash, it just keeps coming back, most recently and uniquely in the form of the Marauders fandom. I researched this so much that my friends were concerned for me and I totally destroyed my TikTok for you page. But it's all worth it in the end because I've answered the most important question of the Marauders fandom. Now just what on earth are they doing over there? Arguably, Harry Potter is the biggest franchise in the world. It's made roughly 50 zillion dollars and turned its author JK Rowling into a kajillionaire. Technical term. Harry Potter consists of seven main books, eight main movies, several other movies set in the same universe, faux textbooks and fairy tales, a controversial yet forgettable video game, and a mobile game that sold criminally irresponsible amounts of microtransactions to children. Oh, also the theme parks. At this point, the Harry Potter series is almost baked into the fabric of our society. Normally this would be the point where I tell you what it's about, but I'm not gonna do that for two reasons. Number one, the only way that you don't know the basic premise of the series, which is that witches and wizards are real and live hidden around us, is if you live under the world's largest and most soundproof rock. And number two, very, very little of the actual plot of the Harry Potter series is in any way relevant to the actual subject of our video. Something else that's not very relevant to the actual subject of our video is that you should really like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. The group named the Marauders describes four students who attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry roughly a generation before the events of the main series. Although the group was never actually referred to as the Marauders in canon, the name comes from the magical map that they created together. The Marauders map. These four students, who were all friends and all in Gryffindor house together, which is the bit where they quarantine the brave ones, consist of James Potter, Harry Potter's dad, who died when he was a baby, Sirius Black, James's best friend, who was falsely convicted of the circumstances that led to James's death and thus locked in prison for many, many years, Rufus Lupin, a werewolf who was at one point professor of defense against the dark arts at Hogwarts as well, and Peter Pettigrew, who betrays James and his wife Lily, joining the Dark Lord Voldemort and directly leading to their deaths at Voldemort. Voldemort's hands. You got all of that? Awesome. Forget it. It won't be relevant. Before we get into talking about the Marauders fandom separate from the actual content of the Harry Potter books, I'm afraid we have to talk about JK Rowling. If you investigate the modern Marauders fandom, you will likely see a certain amount of vitriol directed at JKR. There are a lot of criticisms to be made of her, in particular her treatment of race and sexuality within her books, but probably the most relevant thing to discuss doesn't actually come from the series at all, but actually from from that platform from which it seems that only evil springs forth, Twitter. If you were a chronically online progressive, you probably had a good idea of what was going on with JK Rowling before 2020 because you saw updates about weird stuff she was liking on Twitter or whatever. But in 2020, she had what effectively amounted to a months-long internet-based breakdown over the concept of trans women and how they are not quote unquote real women and how their existence is, in her opinion, a threat to real women everywhere. Rowling takes a stance that is commonly known as being a TERF or a trans exclusionary radical feminist, which is someone who sees themselves as committed to the idea of feminism while not including trans women within their realm and definition of feminism. Turfism does include a lot more than that, and it also has a tendency to operate in ways that are actually pretty subtle if you're not familiar with them. But all of this is really just to give you a little bit more context about why people might not like JKR and why people might want to disavow her even while participating in communities dedicated to her works or why people might want to avoid her works in general. If you want more information on Rowling and her transphobia, I would highly recommend ContraPoint's video on the subject. It is really well researched and very informative. So, out of the four Marauders, really only Remus and Sirius are shown within canon to a large extent. But if you look on Marauders TikTok, you won't just see even the four of them. You'll see other names too, like Lily Evans or Regulus Black or who the hell is Marlene? And the reason that you'll see so much content around these characters, these bit characters, characters who may only have one throwaway line in the books, who might just be a name in a photograph lineup, or who may not even be from the books at all, the reason is because the Marauders fandom as it stands doesn't really come directly from Harry Potter, except for, of course, 
where it does. The story goes somewhat like this. In 2020, a fan fiction called All the Young Dudes goes viral on TikTok. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, that's not right. Um, the story goes something like this. In 2017, a fan fiction called All the Young Dudes is first published on AO3. No, that's that's not right either. Um, oh wait, I think I got it. The story goes something like this. In the year 2000, the book Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is published. Within this book, there is a reference to recently escaped convict Sirius Black being suggested to lay low at Remus Lupin's for a summer. And within roughly that one line, a titan of fandom was born. Up until the point that Remus marries scandalously younger woman Nymphadora Tonks, many fans assumed that Sirius Black and Remus Lupin were fully intended to be a couple by J.K. Rowling herself, and that her hands were simply tied by a homophobic publisher. The full consequences of and surrounding context to this situation are subject to an entirely separate video essay on its own, but all you need to know is that the ship between these two, generally known as Wolfstar, is pretty much, I would say, a classic. <laughs> The other thing you need to know is that the Harry Potter fandom is massive and has been around for a long time, and that the world building of Harry Potter itself is both extensive and also imperfect. What this means is that there are many items, events, and of course people that are mentioned only once and are completely unimportant within the book series itself, but that all of these things have been extensively explored, reimagined, and exploited by the fandom. One area that has always demanded great interest is the Marauders era, the era of Harry Potter's parents. What was Hogwarts like at the time? What was the atmosphere of going to school as tensions rose outside of school, ultimately escalating into war? What were Harry's parents like, their friends, their enemies? So in some ways, the Marauders fandom has been around since those characters were very first mentioned, but the Marauders fandom in a very separate, modern, and distinct sense was born mostly on TikTok. <laughs> Fiction called All the Young Dudes by Ms. King Bean 89 began to be written on AO3 in 2017 and was completed in 2018. And then it went viral in December of 2020. The fanfiction is from Remus's point of view and it is almost entirely canon compliant, except in that Remus was raised in a children's home rather than by his parents. It's set in the 70s in England, and it mostly focuses on Remus and Sirius's relationship, following them from their school days in Hogwarts all the way up to the events of the main Harry Potter series, uh, presumably up until their deaths. I, I will admit I don't actually know because uh, although the fic looks like pretty interesting, uh, it's also a whopping 526 1,969 words long. After going viral in 2020, in 2021, it became the fanfiction on AO3 with the most hits, comments, and kudos out of the entire website. The viral success of all the young dudes on TikTok basically spawned an entirely new fandom concentrated mostly on that very platform. Now, to be completely clear, this fic is not the only thing that created the Marauders fandom, and there are a lot of people who have issues with it, and even more people who are huge Marauders fans who have never read it. Once again, it is over 500,000 goddamn words long. However, it is also ridiculous to argue that the Marauders fandom would be as large as it is and function the way that it does without the success of all the young dudes. And make no mistake, this thing is big. <laughs> there are 22,159 fics tagged as Marauders era within the Harry Potter fandom on AO3, and 14,283 of them are from after December of 2020. And even if not all of those fics are from Marauders fans per se, there are also plenty of fanfictions written by Marauders fans that are not even using that tag. To put those numbers into context, if we count the Marauders fandom itself as having roughly 14 to 15,000 fanfictions on AO3, that puts them within the top 200 largest fandoms on AO3, which is within the top 1%. So that's an overview of what the Marauders fandom is. Now, in Portuguese, which I am learning currently, so please forgive me any mistakes, there are two different words that can be commonly translated into English as bad. The word mal, which is bad as in wrongdoing or evil, and the word huim, which is closer to meaning bad as in bad 
quality. Because I am a nerd, we are going to analyze the Marauders fandom alongside those two different axes. Is it bad as in morally? And also, is it bad as in poor quality? First, and most importantly, when it comes to moral considerations, I will fully and freely admit that the first time I heard about the Marauders fandom and several of the times after that, my initial reaction was a mix of aversion to the idea of people continuing to be into Harry Potter and just kind of wondering why. Like many people, in the wake of JKR's transphobia, I had basically stopped considering myself a fan of the books at all, and I didn't even really like talking about it. I did love the series as a kid and I spent years in the fandom, but I also know and love many trans people, and also I, I don't like bigotry, like in general, so I couldn't help but feel hurt and betrayed and really put off from engaging with the stuff like at all. And the whole thing really wasn't helped by years of watching grown adults look at political conflict within our environment, in particular when it came to Trump's election, and reach immediately and constantly for comparisons to books for children and teenagers like Harry Potter as their only reference point for current events. In the process completely downplaying what was going on, there is a reason that read another book was the slogan for so long. The one thing that I would say about being a Marauders fan is that there is a bit of an iffiness for many people in doing anything that could potentially promote a rolling property and therefore potentially get other people into Harry Potter and become exposed to or convinced by Rowling's views. It's a tricky question because on the one hand there are legitimate reasons to not want to kind of extend the cultural relevancy of Harry Potter, but on the other hand I think there's only so much of our ethical decisions that we can base off of a bunch of what ifs and could maybe potentialies. So I think this is one of those issues that's really just up to your own personal comfort level. Plus the Marauders stuff is pretty far removed from the source material, so I do think that the possibility is lessened somewhat. However, that is not to say that I don't have my own beef with the Marauders fandom as it stands. I have a few things that I observed when I was immersing myself in the fandom for a while. Number one, one thing that many people are very proud of when it comes to the Marauders fandom and their participation in it is the diversity that they have within their headcanons for characters. Uh, the majority of people headcanon James Potter as Indian or Pakistani British, for example. Lily Evans is often headcanoned as plus size and gender and sexuality headcanons are so diverse that I couldn't even kind of draw a generalization to put in here for those. And obviously, I think that's a great thing. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with, though, is a myth that I have seen spread for years by people within fandom as a whole, but also especially by the Marauders fandom, which is that diversity in media does not exist outside of fandom. This is a gross exaggeration, okay? And I find it very frustrating as someone who loves fandom to see see people limit themselves in this way. You absolutely can find original work with gender diversity, diversity in sexuality, and more. Especially when it comes to written works, I see recommendations for diverse novels, both self-published and traditionally published, like on Tumblr all the time. I promise you it's out there. The thing that bugs me the most about this myth is that it really discourages people from looking for media that they might enjoy outside of fandom spaces, and it drives people away from supporting authors with diverse experiences. Of course, there are diverse authors in fandom as well, but not only is that not financial support, but I do find it worthy to note that AO3 users, by our best demographic information, are overwhelmingly white and majority North American or European, uh, which is not particularly giving you a lot of diversity and experience. Again, I have nothing against people reading fanfiction. I don't even have anything against people mostly or exclusively reading fanfiction. I would just prefer that we not lie about it to make ourselves feel better about doing something that other people think is cringe. Okay, number two. This one is nitpicky, and I will admit that I am I'm kind of being a hater because this is this is just the way that fandom works to a certain extent, but people in this fandom talk up the diversity stuff a lot and I will give them major credit that out of the top 100 ships on AO3 for 2023, only six of those were fem slash or a ship between two women. And out of those six ships, two of them were marauder ships. Phantom in general and AO3 in particular are notably pretty abysmal about women. Uh, there's just really not that much attention paid to them among other things. And so this is genuinely impressive. However, the number of works for any given ship is 
definitely not the full story because very, very frequently, a tagged relationship will barely even be mentioned within the work. So, although it's not perfect, there is one tool that we can use to kind of get a better idea of what's going on here, and that is the OTP true filter, which will find all fics that have one singular ship tagged, one specific singular ship. It won't get every work for a pairing, but it is good for comparing. And taking a look at this filter shows a very different story regarding them slash in the Marauders fandom. But there's a reason that I consider this nitpicky, and I will say right now that I would not want this to become a topic of discourse within this fandom. From what I observe, this fandom prides itself as being focused on social justice. I care deeply about social justice, and I have a lot of issues with bigotry that I have observed over the years in fandom. But I often find that fandoms that tend to prioritize a sort of surface level idea of social justice and representation over the idea of just simply being a fan of something often get nasty. When you elevate fandom to the same level of moral importance as activism, you treat every potential misstep as a much more serious issue than it actually has to be. And you kind of get all this sort of weirdness of people constantly attacking each other and airing out fans that they disagree with for kind of public punishment. And so, although I have these critiques of the fandom, I would ironically not want these to be widely discussed within the fandom as a whole. AKA, I don't want some 18 year old getting death threats for writing a sapphic couple as a background ship within their fic. Now let's talk quality. This will be the same as the other sections in that it's pretty much entirely my opinion. However, unlike the other sections, which were informed opinions, this is like just based on vibes. Well, vibes and also years of fandom experience and formal education and literary analysis and several weeks spent immersing myself within the fandom, but vibes. And I have two thoughts about the type of fan work that's going to come out of a fandom like this, because although it's a pretty unique fandom to a certain extent, elements of the way this fandom functions have been present in other fandoms for a very long time. One thing I've observed as sort of a line of tension running through this fandom is the conflict between canon versus fanon. Because of the issues with JK Rowling, many fans reject the idea of canon to such an extent that they actively deny that certain events are canon. On the one hand, this is kind of a fine thing to do. It happens in fandom all the time. Fans create their own versions of events and characters often known as either fanon or head canons that are simply just like what they individually prefer. And in a fandom where most characters and events are, are detailed only sparsely within the actual canon, it makes perfect sense. On the other hand, it does tend to create what is almost like an odd sort of superiority complex wherein people deny that they are playing within anybody else's sandbox at all all, regardless of how much world building they're lifting from Harry Potter or how much characterization is taken from another fanfiction, aka someone else playing in JK Rowling's sandbox, people will deny it entirely. And where I really start to see issues is when fans reject actual canon information, not just in fanfiction where it doesn't really matter, but even within larger analyses. Let's talk about one specific example that I find very difficult to swallow. Sirius Black as a character has long been headcanoned to be a victim of abuse by fans, both physical and emotional. The Marauders fandom continues with that tradition. Uh, it's important to know that this is never explicitly spelled out in canon, although it is heavily implied. Sirius greatly disagrees politically with his parents and is disowned at a relatively young age, and the magical portrait of his mother uh, hurls a lot of nasty insults at him as an adult, but nothing is ever actually made explicit. When fans do analysis of his character, they often include this information, in particular when discussing the way that Sirius is treated by other characters. The fact that Sirius, a beloved member of the Marauders, is a victim of abuse is a very important part of the analysis that they are doing. Also, many of the sources I found as kind of explanations of the Marauders fandom for newbies mention a near-universal hatred 
hatred of the character of Severus Snape, a character who was canonically abused within the original series. I am by no means a Snape defender or a Snape fan, given that I'm, I'm not a fan of the series at all, really. But surely you can see where this tension is going to come into play here, right? An almost universally reviled character versus a beloved one, where canon can be shifted and changed to fit a narrative that fans prefer. A narrative where good people are perfectly good, bad people are perfectly evil, and only the characters we like are allowed to have been victims of abuse. This leads me to what I promise is my very last issue with a fandom like this. One created almost exclusively by fans. Fans in fandom are individually often very talented, intelligent people who create unique and interesting work and analysis. Fandom collectively has a simplifying effect and, and very much prefers things that it has seen before. It likes archetypes, not complex characters. It likes tropes and not originality. Now take that to a fandom that supposedly has no canon and you can see how the selection of what gets lifted from individual works and into the collective fanon is most likely to be the the most simplistic and derivative element of those works. I won't say that that's universally true, but I will say that it has been true of every fandom with popular fan-created characters and well-defined fanon that I've been in before. And that as a participant of fandom, I find it boring as hell. Ultimately, I am a firm believer that you should do what you want. And I certainly don't think that anyone should change what they're doing based off of my personal opinions. But if you clicked on this video, you probably wanted to know two things. Number one, what the Marauders fandom is, and number two, what my opinions on it are. And the answer to number one is that the Marauders fandom is a subsection of the Harry Potter fandom heavily focused on extrapolation from the text to the point that it has developed its own sophisticated canon. And the answer to number two is that like, I think it's like fine ethically, but it's just super duper not my thing. Listen, listen, listen. I watch Minecraft YouTube videos like every single day of my life. You have absolutely no reason to trust my taste. But if you do trust my taste after all of that, feel free to watch some of my other videos. One should pop up on the screen, like, pretty soon. Bye! Remus Lupin, a werewolf who was at one point Professor of Defense Against the Dark... Who was at one point Professor of Defense Against the Dark Warts at... <laughs>